The following show contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, everybody. A little later than usual this week, uh, because scheduling issues happened, and, well, the scheduling issues worked out because while neither of the regular co-hosts could be here this week, due to work and school mostly, uh, we do we did manage to snag our next guest co-host. We have Miss Greer from Those Girls with a Podcast. Hi! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, God, you can tell what part of the country I'm from. I use Miss in front of your name. What the hell is wrong with me? <laughs> yeah, it's all right. Uh, but you're you're from the same kind of area I am, so you, I guess you yeah. might be used to it. Uh, yeah, I've lived kind of in this area my whole life. Not in the area I'm in now, but yeah, because yeah, I know I know you used to live like like three or four hours away from me at one point, and now you live like hour and a half. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's great, and it's great. It's great having you close by. It's great having uh, Steve the Wicked close by too. Like I said on Twitter, we all need to like get together, go do something. Yeah, I don't really have any friends down here yet, yeah. and it kind of sucks. Yeah. It's kind of hard. Um, I was living in. Uh, we were in Tallahassee for about a month and a half or so before we came here, and there was a huge nerd scene there, like just retro gaming stores everywhere, and like there was a huge nerd scene there. But I come to here. And there's not really a, a visible one, or an as visible one as there was in Tallahassee, which is why I was hoping we'd stay in Tallahassee, but we did not. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. Where you're at now, the area it's it's more it's more touristy. Mm-hmm. Because oh, yeah. you've got the no, beaches. it's spring break. It's spring break for like the next two months. Yeah, you got that too. I mean, I mean, even without spring break, I mean, you got you got the people coming down, just coming to the beach from wherever. Uh, oh yeah, so summer, um, from what I hear, just just like March to July is awful for locals here. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, oh, but yeah. I like I like live for like touristy shit. Like I, even if I'm a local, like I live for that kind of shit. Yeah, like, even even back where I used to live, we would have a lot of tourists in the summer because of the beaches, and like there were at times where I didn't like them, like around like Fourth of July mm-hmm. and stuff like that, where I'm just like fucking tourists go away you know because the traffic would be terrible and no one like I, there would be people riding their bikes in the road and i'm like get out of the road you're two feet next to a sidewalk just get onto it yeah and but you know the locals did that too so yeah. but it was really heavy around like fourth of july and stuff like that where we get super busy yeah oh just just wait till you start driving around there in the summer or trying to Oh, yeah. Holy no. shit! No, one of my friends in Tallahassee told me that don't even try to drive anywhere during spring break. Yeah. Or, uh, like, 4th of July, like, because you won't get anywhere. Like, yeah. you, you need to walk and bike everywhere. Your your friend does not exaggerate. Yeah. Although, I can't exactly just go and park and ride because, well, you know, I come I come from Graceville, so it's like hour drive just to get down there. Mm-hmm. Which, that getting down there is not so bad. And and up in the bigger in the bigger part of the city, you know, like the actual city city, you know, it's not as bad. You get down to the beach area, holy shit! Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, and I remember going the, there. The, the beaches, the beaches are really pretty here. I like oh, them. Yeah. Like the sand is like, it's weird because like, Gulf of Mexico sand mm-hmm. is like a completely different kind of sand than like Atlantic Ocean coast sand. Mm-hmm. I noticed because I used to live along the Atlantic Ocean, and I came here, and now I live along the Gulf. And it's like, it's completely different sand. Like it'll, like the sand where I used to live along the Atlantic looks like dirt. Like it doesn't feel like dirt, but it looks like dirt. Right. And then you come here, and it's like blindingly white. Like oh, legit, God, yeah. will blind you. <laughs> oh yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> I'm like, I can't go to the beach when it's like really, really sunny because I cannot see anything. <laughs> Oh, I, I think a lot of people have that. that. That's why I need to get another... I actually have a pair of sunglasses that can fit over my regular glasses. Only problem is they kind of cracked a bit. <laughs> and it's like, no, I can't wear them! Uh. So, okay, so enough about about where we live and, 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 and all the touristy stuff. Wh- how about your show? How, how, did, how did it just come about and everything? Tell us a little bit about uh, your show. Well, I mean, I guess it's kind of hot hot button topic or controversial to say, but we, me and all my friends on that show actually met through 
the Channel Awesome fandom, which is, I, again, I guess kind of controversial to say, we don't really talk about them anymore. Yeah. You know, just because we don't, but because, I mean, we have changed over the course of time. I think me and Fran met about, God, like two years ago, a little more than two years ago, I guess, on uh, through a Facebook group I had made. And we started talking on Skype because we realized how cool each other were. Yeah. I, or I realized how cool she was. And then she's like, oh, you're cool. And I'm like, no, I'm not at all. And, and then uh, I asked people, I said, or I think someone came up with the idea of like, our Skype conversations are funny. We should record them and put them on the internet, even though some of them are bad. And I'm like, that's a great idea. But, like, and now I've been living with it for, like, two years, and no one really cares. But we still like doing it. It gives us something. It gives me something to do, you know. I feel like even if your project doesn't take off, I feel like it's good to sometimes give yourself a project. Yeah. Um, You know, even if it doesn't result in money or recognition or anything like that, it's still a project that I like to do, and it kind of forces me and my uh, friends, which if you don't know, Fran and Heather and Georgia, it kind of forces us to actually get together once a week or at least try to mm-hmm. uh, so we can like talk. And I feel like without that, we we wouldn't remember to to talk to each other as much as we do. Yeah. So it was it's it's half that and half giving myself a project so I don't Descend into, like, just... Total madness? Total depression and insanity. That too. Yeah. And and monotony. and So it's good to kind of give myself something to work on, even if I procrastinate at it a lot. But I do... It, and it also gives me something to look forward to as well. Like, I love... I like talking to my friends and, you know... It, it, it again, it forces us to actually talk to each other. So, yeah. <laughs> not that we don't like talking to each other, but it, it's the uh, distance, and sometimes just schedules don't sync up. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That. Yeah. Uh, like even just this past one, you know, Fran lives in a completely different time zone than the rest of us. She lives in England, so it's kind of hard to get her on sometimes. Mm-hmm. But I look forward to podcasts where we do have her on because I love her so much. Hi, yeah. Fran. <laughs> yes. Hi, Fran. Is she, you know, she she lives closer to uh, Hagen and Omega than I do. Well, I any any of us do now, but you know, so it's like, so it's like she could like pop over to Northern Ireland and go give them both a hug if she wanted to. <laughs> they probably let her. Cause, and, and, cause and we also we're like seventy episodes in around, and we just finally got a new a new regular for our our round table because I feel like we needed more because it's like the four of us aren't cutting it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just support us. We need we need to switch up a little bit. So I just found uh, Caitlin, who's a really nice girl, Sweet. and uh, she seems to fit in very well with the rest of us. Awesome. Um, and I, you know, I mean, in some earlier episodes, if you go back and watch like episodes from like 2012, I think is when we started this. We did have different people that were on, and that was just me kind of like testing the waters of different people. And there are some people I wish had kind of stayed with us, but. Unfortunately, their schedules are still very weird, so yeah. it's kind of hard to get that many people kind of together in one place for two hours <laughs> yeah. at a time on uh, a, yeah. sometimes a weekday, you know? It's like hurting. I always I always describe it as it's like trying to get the four of us together on the same day at the same hour is like trying to herd cats into a bathtub. <laughs> Oh, Hollywood has said the same thing. You know, oh, lordy. Uh, which, speaking of Holly, by the way, uh, everybody knows my co-host Holly, Holly Christine Brown, Holly the Bunny, all, all of her. Um, she is Holly put... is my waifu. Holly is your waifu? Yeah. Okay. Notice me, Holly, please. <laughs> okay, but um, she actually has put up a GoFundMe page to help with medical expenses and to help find a doctor that can find out what just what the fuck is wrong with her like completely wrong with her you know because and i the the gofundme link is going to be below and if you've got some money to spare you got you know you need to toss you have some money you just need to toss aside or whatever toss it at her because she could really use it 
Medical bills suck when you don't have insurance. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't have any sort of insurance right now. Mm-hmm. And when I first moved uh, here, uh, I immediately started having, like, a tooth problem. I had an infection in one of my back teeth where it had a filling. Mm-hmm. And I went to the dentist, and I said, okay, so we can take it out for you for, like, 200 bucks. Or you can go through this incredibly painful and prolonged root canal surgery that will cost you, like, $4,000. And I'm like, I'll just have it pulled. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Something you could probably just as easily do with a doorknob and a string. Yeah. It costs you 200 bucks. Yeah. Well, I mean, although when they it's, pulled it... Although they probably do it a lot safer. Yeah. When they pulled it, I never had, like, a tooth pulled before while I was awake. I had my wisdom teeth taken out, but I was under while that happened. Yeah. And thankfully, that was when I still had insurance when I was in when I was a minor when I was in high school. Yeah. And because uh, my parents were like, "You don't want to have wisdom teeth when you're like past 25 because it's gonna hurt really bad. So we're gonna get them out while you're like 15. Yeah. <laughs> and while you still have insurance and while they'll still pay for it. Uh. So I never had a tooth pull before while I was awake, and uh, I think I felt the Novocaine in my mouth for, like, a day and a half. Like, it did not go away oh, wow. for, like, a day and a half. They numbed me up that much. And I was awake, and they'd waited, like, 30, 30 minutes for it to take fully take effect. Mm-hmm. And the whole pulling of it took, like, 10 seconds. Wow. <laughs> like, they were, like, drill, drill, drill. I felt pressure and kind of, like, a yank. And then, like, okay, you're done. And I'm, like, but what? Really? <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess it, well... I remember when I was a kid, we we actually had to uh, pull one of my wisdom teeth out at home because for I don't I don't remember exactly why. Uh, I you know I know we had insurance at the time. Maybe we just couldn't find a dentist, or maybe it was just it needed to get out now. Otherwise, shit was gonna go horribly wrong or whatever. And oh my god, it hurt! Not only did it hurt, there was blood everywhere. Mm-hmm. It was like. <laughs> It's yeah. Like, yeah, I am so glad I never had to go through. Yeah, I was like bleeding again. for like two days out of my mouth for a long time, and they gave me my tooth, which was pretty cool. <laughs> I'm like, the minute like they had stuck gauze in my mouth, and then they told me to sit up, and I'm like, the first thing out of my mouth was like, "Where's my tooth? <laughs> I really wanted to see my tooth for some reason." Because <laughs> oh, I didn't Lordy. get to, I didn't get to keep. I wanted to keep my wisdom teeth when they got taken out because I'm like, I want to keep my teeth. That'd be awesome. <laughs> And then they said they couldn't salvage my teeth because they had to, like, drill them out in, like, pieces. Yeah. So there wasn't, like, a whole tooth that they had to give me. And then I got, like, my tooth pulled out of my head a few months ago. And I'm like, where's my tooth? I want it. And it was just going to go in the garbage anyway. So they're, like, here. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Probably got it, probably got it up, sitting up somewhere in your room. Like, it's yeah, really, see, like, tooth. it's weird looking. I've never seen a tooth out of someone's mouth. It's It's... Or, or my own, like, except in, like, pictures, I'd never seen one, like, in front of me in my hand. I'm like, whoa, that's weird. You never, okay, you never, like, when you were a kid, you you know, like, your teeth, your baby teeth would fall out. You never sat there oh, and yeah, looked at no, it? Oh, yeah, no, like, adult teeth Okay. don't look like baby teeth, though. This is baby true. teeth look like, they look like pebbles. Yeah. When you have, like, an adult tooth, it looks like a, like a tooth, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Oh, but, oh boy, but but yeah. Um, to, to get back to to Holly, you know, you know, links below if you can throw some money at her. She could really use the help. Uh, but uh, I also... yeah, that's a lot more important than my tooth story. So <laughs> honestly, it really is. Sorry. Yeah. But um, but but usually one of the things we do on this show, I, I do try and do this, and I and I kind of forgot to tell Greer about this before we started, but we do have shout outs. Um, and I actually do have one besides Holly. Uh, I found a short film. In fact, it may have been Holly that shared this. I don't remember. But it's a short film called Blind Devotion. You can find it on YouTube. It's about, I think it's less than ten minutes. And it's about a guy who who ends up, I think as they say, the guy ends up following his wife to work every day. And, and the reason will, 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 you know, astound you and make you cry and all of that. And as clickbaity as that as that description sounds, it's it's pretty accurate. So it's a really great short film. Again, Blind Devotion. Just look it up on YouTube. You should be able to find it rather easily. I hope. Uh, 
But if not, again, that link's going to be below. Um, and like I said, I know this is like like kind of sprung on you at the last minute, but do you have any particular ones that you can shout out at the top of your head, Greer? Or... Like at a person or like a video in general? It could be either one. All I watch are like really popular people. <laughs> Yeah, this is true. You sound like, oh, you're fucking sheep. No, like I, I like popular things, and I hate when like, I hate when like if you if they if people hear that you like something that's a fad or that's popular, like it, it somehow like is in parallel with your intelligence to that person. Like, oh, you like, you like Five Nights at Freddy's. You must be like an idiot, and like. I'm like, no, it doesn't. It doesn't make anyone an idiot. But, no. like, all I really watch are, like, really popular people. I don't know, like, uh, um, I watched this really cute video on YouTube, and I can't stop watching it. <laughs> well, will will that work? Uh, uh, well, I, I, if, if you wanted to. <laughs> There's a video on the internet on on YouTube of this husky that tries this husky puppy that's trying to talk and all it all like he, he's really trying to talk and all it comes out is like bah, 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 bah. like literally Aww. that's the sound that is the legit sound and it is like the cutest thing I've ever seen it's just called talking husky puppy or something yeah it's really cute yeah well if you haven't seen that yeah. fucking watch that well there you go. Yeah, well, I don't really, again, like, I really only watch, like, popular people. Because it's really hard to find, like, un, more unpopular shows or, like, underrated shows because they're just so hard to find now. Yeah. I will give you a suggestion here. The D-Pad. Uh-huh. They are they're, they're a group of Let's Players. Uh, they started out, I think, as an online radio show, and then they started doing Let's Plays, and the radio show kind of fell by the wayside. Um, they, I think it was a couple of years ago they started, and they just recently finished the Legendary Let's Play, where they played through all of the Zelda games that, mm -hmm. that were coming out, including, like, one or two that came out during that time. And now they're doing the Mega Let's Play, which they're playing through all the Mega Man games. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they, they're, they, they are just simply hilarious. They, they've... Of, of course, they're all a bunch of friends, so of course they got the great chemistry going on, and and one of the one of the guys, Dustin, I love watching him play and then just rage at the game because <laughs> he is hilarious. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I guess there's a show like that I I can promote. Um, well, I mean, there are a lot of like things that are popular, but I guess can be considered underrated. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a show like that I, that I love. I love Continue Show. Like, they're fucking hilarious. If you like if you like Game Grumps but want something like a little more insane, mm -hmm. like, and, and I, don't, I don't know, there's something about Continue Show that they're so genuine. Not that, like, something like Game Grumps is not genuine. Mm -hmm. I don't think that at all. Right. But, like, they're so, um, what Continue Show does is there's three guys, um, uh, Paul, Nick, and Josh, who play a game for around 15 minutes, and then at the end of that, they decide whether they would continue to play that game or not. Oh, yeah. And it's really funny. They're, they're all just naturally funny. Yeah. And it's, it's amazing that, you know, it, it's amazing how naturally funny they are as friends. They have really... Mm -hmm. Really good chemistry. Um, just pretty much anyone at like, I, I like I watch pretty much all of Normal Boots and Hidden Block, and a lot of those guys there are popular, but there are a lot that are like underrated. Like on Normal Boots, you have like your John Tron and Peanut Butter Gamer and Pro Jared, who I watch all the time. Mm -hmm. But like you have Continue Show, who I feel is kind of underrated, and Satch Bag, who's kind of underrated as well, and he does like really really great videos if you love like intelligent editorials on video games mm -hmm. like watch those watch satch bag because he is fucking awesome and i love hidden block and they're kind of like 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 normal boots light mm -hmm. like, <laughs> like they're a little more underrated um i mean they have their popular people and they're like Icarus and um nintendo fan ftw mm -hmm. and uh but I mean, they have some really other good people on there too, like Balrog the Master and uh, Space Hamster and Brutal Noose. I think they're all really funny. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, you know, 
if you've watched people on their site but haven't like gone into more people on that site, please do because they're all very very funny. Yeah, I mean that that's the way you you, you spread out your experiences. I mean hell, when 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 Channel Awesome was even bigger and not as controversial as it is now, how do you think I got to know and meet so many of the people that I do know? Oh yeah, and um, we actually we actually made a podcast about that, but it got lost. Like the audio got corrupted, and I was so sad because it was a really good episode where we oh, had no. a serious where we had a serious talk. But, oh dear. <laughs> but the uh, I I think what what me and um, my friends at that sh- at our show what we kind of had a hard time with was kind of denouncing that we have anything to do with Channel Awesome because we were essentially two like three two or three years ago we wanted to be like a Channel Awesome podcast and it yeah. was like that would be awesome but it's it, we slowly just wanted it to make it about our dumb Skype conversations that we have mm-hmm. and sometimes we have a theme to them you know and uh we we don't really have like a structure on our show we just kind of bullshit talk for an hour, and if you like that, then listen to us, I guess. Because sometimes they're boring, but sometimes we have really funny ones, I think. Um, but what we had a hard time with, and what I had a hard time with, and I talked with Fran about this, was like, it's really hard for me to say I can't support these people anymore, because without that group of fans started by those people, yeah, then... I wouldn't have even met Fran in the first place. I wouldn't have met Georgia and Heather, you know, and even Caitlin, you know, I would not have met those girls at all. Right. And a lot of, a lot of my, my gal pals that I have, a lot of my nerdy, my nerdy girlfriends, I wouldn't have met them if not for the, the fandom of that website. Yeah. And so that's, I talked with Fran about that and I said, that's what's the hardest thing for me right now, really. And this was like a few months ago. Um, I'm kind of a little bit over it now, but yeah. Uh, and it, it's just, it, I just felt weird about it. And you know what I mean though? Like, oh, yeah. I, I feel like I'm kind of rambling a little bit. It, it, it's okay. You know, it, it's for, for once I'm not the motor mouth. <laughs> <laughs> no, I um, ramble like a fucking ton. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. No, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's usually me rambling and not, and me having to apologize. So, <laughs> So it, it it's kind of kind of a, kind of a break for my for for me for motor mouthing I guess if, if that makes any sense. Um, it's a positive thing. It's what I'm. It's it's the takeaway from that. Yeah. Uh, but you know. But yeah. As far as the channel, awesome fandom for me. You know. You know. You you talk about meeting you know your friends and everything, and I've met two girlfriends. I, I, I have attained two girlfriends through this fandom. One of which, obviously, I'm not dating. The other one is. I have I have acquired two girlfriends. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if acquired is the right word. I guess met <laughs> a little bit a, a, a bit more. Uh, my my most recent ex. Well, she discovered me through one of Diamond Hawkins videos. I'll let you guess which one. Um, and we just worked out from there. And then, and then Becky, who is my current girlfriend, uh, she and I met through one of. I think one of Dodger's games of Cards Against Humanity. Of course, we all know Dodger Zion. She she's one of the one of uh, uh you know she she's one of uh, Lewis's biggest supporters and helpers and contributors as well. And of course, Lewis is is uh, connected to Channel Awesome. So there you go. You know. Oh, uh, but yeah. So it's like I I can honestly say that um, I, I have met some really amazing people because of Channel Awesome and that particular fandom. Oh, but. Yeah, you know, it's kind of like it's kind of like, and I mean, I've seen this happen in like other places too, where it's like, you know, oh, we met through the 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 fans of you know who's someone controversial, um, Sam Sam Pepper, oh, dear. I guess. <laughs> it's like, oh well, I oh, can't we from, continue. To... We go to Sam Pepper now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know. It's an example that I've seen. Like people have met through like. The fans of Sam Pepper, and now they like can't don't support Sam Pepper anymore because he's a shithead yeah. or something like that. Or yeah. you know, that's just an example. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, Definitely. people that met through people and fandoms that were once great but now are not. Yeah, uh, I I don't even I, I I think it was last year when Ch- when Channel Awesome had their last big uh, casting call as I as I prefer to call them because it it kind of is. 
you know, I, I sent in, like, everything. I just threw everything at the wall. And it was like, eh, nope. <laughs> but, oh, yeah. well. Although, although I will say that whenever I do casting calls, I try to be a little bit more timely in my... Re well, okay, okay. I'm, I was about to say something that's really not fair because they got, like, thousands of, of responses. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, whereas I didn't get quite as many... <laughs> I got enough to where, to where I lost sleep, but, you know. I just remembered someone to give a shout-out to. Oh, I yeah? just remember. I okay. just just came into my brain. Someone okay. who's not very popular, but uh, I think should be. Okay. My friend my friend Dave, who you who you probably know, is Zenith, Zenith Will Rule. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah he's Zenith. really talented. I love his shit. And I think he's, like, the coolest dude. And, I yeah, again, another guy I met through fucking Channel Awesome stuff. Oh, yeah. Definitely. And he's it, really cool. Like, is. we bond over, like, anime all the fucking time. Because I can never, like, talk about anime on our podcast because yeah. I'm really the only anime fan. No one else, Heather, George, and Friend, don't watch anime. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to, this, this... To, be fair, I'm tr to be fair, Georgia has watched some, mm -hmm. and Fran, I really want to get into anime. <laughs> Yeah. Like, I'm really trying. Like, she actually, um, when, uh, I'll get a little down for a second here. When, uh, when Monty Um passed away mm -hmm. about a month ago, and I was very, very upset about it. I'm a huge Rooster Teeth fan, by the way, if you guys don't know that about me. Yeah. Huge Rooster Teeth fan. Um, when Monty Um passed away, uh, it, it, she saw how sad I was and was like, well, what's something he's done? And I'm like, well, you should watch Ruby. And I realized at that moment how good of a gateway anime Ruby is, because it's not too crazy, it's not too complicated, it has a lot of tropes that you see a lot in anime, so it gets you used to that. I'm like, that would actually be a perfect anime for you to start on, go watch Ruby. And she actually did go and wa binge watch all of Ruby, because the episodes of Ruby aren't very long. And uh, so she went and binge watched all of Ruby, and she's like, this is awesome! <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, great, I can't wait to get you into more anime! <laughs> Sweet, but yeah, but yeah, Zenith, Zenith. He, you know where you can find him. I know where you can find him. You can find him on Nerdvice. Nerdvice, yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, but for now, we 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 really got to hit the news this this week because you know we we both kind of ramble a little bit here and there. So, but you know, hey. Again, I don't do good with structure, so I'm very yeah. sorry if I ah. just go completely off the rails. <laughs> oh, it happens. It it happens on regular shows. So you know. Mm -hmm. You know, because I'm hosting, so, you know, of course. Of course it's going to happen. All right, so um, our top news story. Now, this one does have a little bit of an extra um, thing to do it as well, uh, update, since I actually put it in. Uh, so, and, and I'll talk about that when we get there. Because they do not seem to be do, able to do anything productive, Republicans have introduced a bill into the House that would destroy net neutrality. Now, yeah, because, because the FCC voted to say, hey, you know, you know, uh, you know, internet connections, that sort of thing. Yeah, the internet is, is, is basically a utility, according to the FCC. This is what they want to do. So, I misspoke. This is actually the follow-up to what I was thinking. I, I, I got my uh, timeline messed up there. So, this story is the follow-up. Uh, the Internet Freedom Act would prohibit the Federal Communications Commission from reclassifying reclassifying, rather, broadband internet access service as a telecommunication service and from imposing certain regulations on providers of such service. The bill was introduced into the House Energy and Commerce Committee by Representative Marsha Blackburn of Tennessee. Yeah, she is a Republican. It has a whopping 31 co-sponsors attached to it. All of them are, of course, Republicans. The bill, should make it to the, White, should, the bill, should it make it to the White House, is destined to be vetoed by the President Obama. Obama has spoken out publicly in favor of net neutrality numerous times. He even wrote an open letter thanking all those who contributed to the more than 4 million comments sent to the FCC regarding net neutrality after they announced the, that the internet would be reclassified as, a, as an utility. Uh, my, my, my grammar is, is like, I think it is a utility. I know the, the, the whole a and rule written, but uh, I pronounce I've always heard, I've never heard <laughs> an utility. It, I think it's a utility. Because it is. It, it doesn't start... It, it, it's written as and, but I think it's a because it's technically a, a consonant sound that's coming out. Yeah. E -U. 
But e- you say you say an umbrella and a utility. Yeah, it, it's it's a weird thing. Thanks, thanks, middle school. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, if uh, school taught me one thing, it's how to be grammar police on the internet. Oh yeah, trust me, you got me. Even even Holly a little bit here and there, will do the same thing. Uh, Representative Blackburn said in a press release, Last week's vote by the FCC to regulate the Internet like a 1930s-era public utility is further proof that the Obama administration will stop at nothing in their efforts to control the Internet. There is nothing free and open about this heavy-handed approach. These overarching rule- overreaching rules will stifle innovation, restrict freedoms, and lead to billions and billions of dollars in new fees and taxes for the American consumers. I, I-, I added the extra billions. And, um... Yeah, no. What 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 this whole net neutrality is, it's basically companies cannot discriminate on where their particular users go. Like say for example, like like say Comcast owns let's say Comcast is 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 getting, you know, some good monies or whatever from YouTube and they and so of course, you know, under net neutrality they could go to YouTube, they could go to Hulu, they could go wherever. But without it, then say I, I think it was there was like one company that basically blackmailed Netflix into giving them more money, or else they throttle all their fucking connection speeds. Yeah, I forgot who that was. I don't think it was Comcast. It was someone else. I don't I th- remember. It was either Comcast or Verizon. It was one of those two. Or Time. It might have been Time Warner. I'm not sure. I don't remember. Yeah, but it was one of them, and that kind of thing is what net neutrality is supposed to help prevent. Because it's it's, I mean, not even not even when it comes to entertainment. You come to people like Greer and me, who who hey, we do this shit on the internet. You know, we, we can't be sitting here five hours making sure something uploads to YouTube or or to the WordPress account. In in my case, and, you know, because some idiot doesn't like the fact that we do the shows that we do, or or what have you. You know, or even like you know, people that make a living off of YouTube. Yeah. Like, if you look at, like, Markiplier, mm-hmm. who uploads, who has a strict upload schedule, he's getting a, strip up, a strict upload schedule now. Oh, yeah. But, uh, like, he uploads videos at 11 and 2 Eastern, I think, every day. And, you know, that would really kind of throw a wrench in his, you know, his schedule. If, yeah. you know, if he wasn't paying enough money to someone, or YouTube wasn't anyway. You know, if I'm getting this correct, I've not been keeping up with this net neutrality thing. Yeah, <laughs> like, embarrassingly enough, as someone who's on the internet as much as I am, I've not been keeping up with this like whatsoever. Yeah, and and I admit I don't post. I mean, people. I, I, I think a lot of older <laughs> people don't realize how many people actually do can make their living off of the internet now. I mean, if you look at the people on YouTube who have a million plus subscribers. Yeah. Hell, or Mark, a yeah. million a million plus views every single day. Yeah, hell. The 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 Grums, Markiplier, Angry Joe. Hell, fucking or Lewis. Even Lewis. PewDiePie Lewis Pie. PewDiePie is the most, you know, un, uh subscribed YouTuber on YouTube. Yeah. And this is how he makes his living. There you go. I mean and and of course you got that. You know, not not just the views, you've also got Patreon people making money through as well. So mm-hmm. So I mean there there is if if worse comes to worse, you know, and like YouTube or, doesn't or pay like, or whatever. Or like, mm-hmm. Yeah, or that, say or like you know Rooster Teeth who have to work with companies to make sure that some of their videos don't get pulled down for copyright. Yeah. You know and you know and they make they've been around for ten years because they've made their entire career off of the internet and off of YouTube. Oh yeah. They're a they're a company with around fifty plus employees now I think. And they've been around for ten plus years. Yeah. Just damn. Yeah, and and they they want to fuck everybody over and, because. And they just moved to a sound a new sound stage in Austin. You know, it's it's hard to, you know, and of course it's it's helped that they they were just acquired by uh, full screen. Nice. Which has been helping them a lot. Awesome. But, so it's not just strictly YouTube and ad money now, but. Yeah. So. So, all right, also, um, a look at Open Secrets reveals that Representative Blackburn received multiple donations to her campaign from Internet service providers. Second largest donation made to her last campaign was from AT&T in the amount of $25,000. God damn it, AT&T. And she also received $20,000 from Comcast and another 15000 from Verizon. Gee, 
It's almost like these companies don't want to be able to play fair. <laughs> it's almost like these companies want to be able to throttle one's internet service at will for whatever reason. When mm-hmm. that is not right. <laughs> it's not fair. You know, we, we have this thing, it's called the First Amendment. We have the freedom of speech, freedom of expression, all of that really great stuff. And by stifling, you know, the outlets people can use, in this case the internet, you're, you're kind of stifling on the First Amendment rights of these people I, I i am imagining if if i'm inaccurate on this please somebody correct me but i don't think i am i mm-hmm. really don't uh, i mean and it, and it helps also with youtubers i mean if anything like this were to happen which it, it won't but i mean like i mean thankfully there are a lot of new outlets for youtubers and content creators again like patreon <laughs> Uh, you have people who do sponsorships for um, I th- uh, the two main sponsorships I see a lot, especially in the nerd community, are uh, Audible and Loot Crate. Mm. And I think even JonTron, his videos um, now, he does like an Audible ad at the end of his videos. Rooster Teeth has sponsorships during their podcasts. Mm-hmm. And it helps them out a lot when people go and sign up for free trials for something like audible, which are something people would like to do anyway, you know, audiobooks are something a lot of people are into now. And loot crate is a very cool service. Yeah. And, you know, thankfully it's all these really cool services. Um, dollar shave club is what I've seen on, on the rooster teeth podcast. Um, and it's all these cool services that again, you know, it's not like they do services for, you know, a product people aren't going to want to use, you know, John Tron does audible, um, I think PBG did a Loot Crate video. Um, know. You know, a lot of these services that, you know, especially Loot Crate and Audible, they really know how to, who their demographic is, you yeah. know? So I they mean, get to the YouTubers that appeal to their demographic, and it's like, oh, well, I could go get a free audiobook if I wanted to do that, and I could help support, say, JonTron at the same time as well. Yeah. Especially since he doesn't upload a video every single day. Yeah. So it helps him out and mm-hmm. indirectly helps him out. I mean, surely some money is going to audible, but yeah, they got to keep their lights you know. on too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, just like in, on uh, Patreon, when you, when you, when you pledge like, like the dollar per video or whatever, you know, yeah, I, I get a good chunk of that, but at the same time, that also goes back to Patreon to help with like, I think with like, you know, processing fees, keep their lights on that sort of thing. So, Mm-hmm. So it's all a very understandable thing, and I, you notice I'm not bitching about it <laughs> because yeah. it's I mean, very well, understandable. I mean, I mean, you know, I'm glad that there are other outlets for mm-hmm. content creators now. Yeah, you know, so people have more than one option, so they don't have to put as many ads in their videos that people are going to complain day and night about. Yeah. Um, you know, so people don't get guilted into using Adblock or, or yeah. guilted about using Adblock or, you know, whatever. Yeah. You know, so there are a lot more outlets besides ad revenue that, thankfully, that content creators can get. But, yeah. I mean, you know. Which, which I'm, I'm hoping, I know Lewis has a Patreon, and I know for a while I, he was, he was, he was at the, uh, you know, telling, you know, people, you know, asking them not to use their Adblock or whatever. I wonder if he's at a point to where he can actually not have to worry about the ad revenue. You mm-hmm. know, he just subsists just solely off of Patreon. You know, I'm I'm not gonna check now, but but that would that would be an interesting interesting thing. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and 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 while we're on Patreon, I did I did want to address this uh, at one point anyway. Um, if you look at my Patreon, it shows that I'm like up to my second milestone right now. That is a little bit misleading because one of the people I'm, I'm giving this this other guy an extra month just to give him the benefit of the doubt. There was there was one guy who pledged ninety nine dollars per video, mm-hmm. and didn't set a max cap. And and this was like the end of last month or whatever. So I'm like, okay, cool. You know, we'll, we'll you know test it out. I had a couple of videos I could I was able to put up, and uh, he ended up being declined. So I said, Uh-oh. okay, yeah. I said, okay, you know, it doesn't hurt me financially. You know, I didn't make any grand plans or anything because I have a healthy dose of, dose of skepticism at times, I like to think. So 
So hopefully, you know, within the next month, maybe he'll realize, oh shit, maybe I didn't mean to do this. Maybe I meant to do something else. I don't know. Or I just had a bad thing and, and didn't realize what was going on. So it's basically giving him a chance to say, hey, you know what? You get one more chance. If not, then it gets booted back down. But, you know. But, yeah. that that I, And I mentioned that just to uh, mention something. I know the Rangoons have mentioned it a time or two before. But um, if you don't, if you pay if, when you go to support somebody on Patreon, pay attention to your funds, please. Yeah. Yeah, and and if the guy so, turns there's out there's a be, surprising amount of people that don't re- that don't realize that Patreon is a monthly thing. Monthly or even by or even per production. Yeah. Because there's a lot of people that don't realize that for some reason, like they think it's Indiegogo or whatever. Yeah, it's just. But yeah, it it, it really, literally is just it is recurring. Uh, thankfully, most most of my patrons patrons do understand this. Thankfully, mm-hmm. um, yeah, that that's that's why. If you've looked at my Patreon page and, and you're wondering why I didn't bring up that guy, that's why. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and if it turns out he's just some guy that's just putting it in there to get other people's hopes up, then uh, fuck him. Um, but that time will tell. Time will tell on that one. Uh, so we'll hit. Let's hit a little something a little more lighter. A little more lighter. A little lighter. Uh, out of Salem, mm-hmm. New Hampshire. It is a dream come true for Girl Scout cookie lovers. Troop 121115 in Salem plans to host a special fundraiser Sunday, which means they've already done it, I think, to help reach their cookie selling goal for the year. The girls will set up a Girl Scout cookie drive through at this Gar- Garabedon Properties located at this place on Main Street. People looking to get a sweet fix can drive up, get their, select their favorite cookie flavor, and drive away satisfied. Troop Leader said the cookie program not only provides customers with delicious cookies, it also teaches girls about money management, business ethics, and people skills. Troop 12, 11, 15 in Salem would like to sell 5,000 boxes of cookies, and so far they've sold over 1,200 boxes. drive through Girl Scout cookies. This Dude, needs just, to be a thing. Can I just say, Samoas are so overrated. And Thin Mints, <laughs> they're overrated. Tagalongs are where it's at. There you go. I hate... <laughs> Full confession here. I hate Thin Mints. <laughs> and I hate I hate Samoas yeah. because A, I don't like ch- like chocolate mint stuff. Mm-hmm. I just don't like them. And B, I don't like coconut. Yeah. So the two most popular Girl Scout cookies, I can't fucking stand. But Tagalongs are the shit. There you go. Ta- yeah. I'll eat ta- I'm like Tagalong Master Race. Like, those are the fucking <laughs> greatest. Oh... Oh. Also, um, whatever the the other peanut butter ones are. Yeah, the dosi dos. Dosi dos. I love those. You give me about twenty boxes of dosi dos, I will go down on you. I don't care if you're a dude. <laughs> I will go down on you. <laughs> uh, maybe. Okay, but uh, but yeah, that this needs to be a thing, like like all over. Just make it a thing, you know. You know, I, I, well, considering considering it's little girls selling all of this, I don't think you could do it like a constant thing, you know? Yeah, it can't be year-round. There's child labor laws. Yeah, you can't do that, but, um... Or or maybe, or, or could if you, like, get, like, the, the ones that are legally able to work, you know, like, older, older, older like, like women or, or teenage girls or whatever. You know, you get them to do it, and that's fine. I, I can I can see that. And then, like, maybe once or twice a month, you get the little kids come in, you know, for their own fundraisers or whatever. And that, and that would be kind of cool. I just want drive scroll through scroll. I just want drive through scroll Girl Scout cookies. I can speak, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> I just want those because those would be awesome. I mean, we can already order them online. Because, because, because there's that... an there's an app I think where you can. I think it's like an official app mm-hmm. where you put in what zip code you're in, yeah. and it'll tell you what's the closest place. Like if it's like Girl Scout cookie season or something, yeah. you could put in your zip code and it'll tell you the closest place to you that's selling them. Sweet. <laughs> on what on what day and, you know, stuff like that. Like, oh, fucking, they're selling them at a table at Walmart today. Better go get some, you know. <laughs> there you go. Oh, uh, I, I, I will I will not lie. If, 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 I, if I get to a place where I can allow this, I will tell any Girl Scout troop, you want to sell cookies in front of my house, that is fine. Just give me at, at least 10% of your dosi dos yeah. and, I'll, I'll, and I will pay for them. <laughs> <laughs> Which, uh, yeah. well. Alright, so. In conclusion, them men suck. There you go. <laughs> I actually kind of like them, but I prefer dosi dos more. Uh, 
But uh, anyway, so our next one. Oh, so so you you know Fox News. Everybody knows Fox News. We make fun of them. We we bitch at them. We fuss at them. All Why are we even stuff. going over this story when we know, like, by the end of it, we're just going to be like, well, that's dumb. Okay, time to go to the <laughs> next one. <laughs> Pretty much. Pretty much, but we're going to do it anyway because... I'm seeing Rush Limbaugh in this article, and I'm like, well, this is obviously going to, like, be terrible and weird and bad. It is, but we've got to we've got to go through it. We've got to go Why? through it. Why? There, there are no... There should not be any rules. <laughs> Why oh, must you oh. conform to your own rules? Because they're my rules. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A frequent Fox News guest who publishes a climate change denial blog is upset that Google's popular web search engine is being re-engineered to direct users to more trustworthy websites, saying, let the public decide what's the truth, in video captured by Media Matters for America. Mark Morano, who helms the Climate Depot website de dedicated to dismissing scientific consensus on global climate change, told a reporter for Fox News that Google's proposed changes mean that will mean the tech giant is basically saying that truth is what a government agency says it is. One problem with that logic, um, Google's not run by the government. Google's yeah. a private company. I mean, and while I do agree that Google shouldn't be, like, bumping up more what they deem trustworthy websites, mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, you can just go on fucking Fox News website and find it yourself. Like, you, why do you have to go to Google directly? Yeah. I mean, well, I do agree that Google shouldn't be, like, bumping up certain websites that, yeah. you know, either pay them more or who they agree with politically more. You know, just post the more accurate thing to your search, yeah. you know? I think that's... Or just add, or just add this topic, foxnews.com, at the end of your search or something like that, you yeah. know? I think, I think Google does... I think that's one of the things that Google is looking at doing is, like, hey, you know, this stuff that's... This particular source that's had more you know, factual correctness is going to get bumped up as opposed to something that's had more, you know, inaccurate facts. More, more bias. I feel like, I feel like Google shouldn't be having a bias either way. I feel like bias on one side more than the other, even if, even if I do agree with that side more than the other. Yeah. I, I feel like bias is not a good thing to have, especially when you're a global company. Yeah. Let's see. Here's the thing, though. It, it, you know, right now it's based on truth. Well, not on truth, but it's on popularity and not on truth. What mm -hmm. happens when the more popular thing is the one with all of the wrong information and, and yeah. it's wrong, dangerous information, like like climate change deniers or the anti-vaxxers, for example? You know, what happens then when they're the more popular ones? People are going to people aren't going to sit there and go through ten Google pages. Most people aren't. They're going to want to. They're going to go for the first one and assume that's the truth. Well, and would you I, say the same where, thing? Would you say the same thing about something like TMZ? Um, who it, it depends don't, on who don't post accurate things, inaccurate things often, but sometimes it pops up if there's like a rumor going around yeah. that started by some shitheads like the National Enquirer or something, and it's like, oh, fucking Lindsay Lohan is pregnant, and then TMZ jumps on it. Uh, you know, with some, they'll get some sort of bullshit evidence and then post it on their front page. And then when you Google TMZ, or when you Google Lindsay Lohan pregnant, that's the first thing that comes up, even though it's not true. Yeah, well, that that also could be. Does it, that make sense? I'm not making it, sense. <laughs> it, I, I think I see where you're going with this. You know, when it comes when it comes to, you know with more pop culture stuff, again, if it it's if it it's, can extend past politics, is what I'm saying. Yeah. That's basically it. It's like again, it's it's basically just on accuracy, like truth. Like like say there's you know, like let's let's use the TMZ example. Like TMZ let's say that sixty percent is truth and forty percent is not truth. Just for the sake of argument, pulling numbers yeah. out of my ass. You know, they would probably they would get a little bit more bumped up than say the National Enquirer, whose numbers would be reversed, <laughs> for yeah. example. So then and, and that way you're getting the truth more quickly than you're getting a lie. Mm -hmm. And that's what this guy doesn't like. He, he, he basically, from what I'm reading here, is basically saying, yeah, we want to be able to spew our bullshit and everybody to get it first before they get to the stuff that really disproves us. We want to have our say when, you know, your, your say, yeah, okay, you, you have opinions on things, but this is a climate change. Climate change, global warming, whatever it is, it's happening. 
It is yeah. a fact. There is no denying it. And just like these anti-vaxxers that are saying, well, kids did fine without anti without vaccines way back in the old days. Yeah, they also died young, too. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's one of those things where you are you are demonstrably wrong about something and you are spreading this demonstrably wrong info around the around the Internet, around the world. And you really shouldn't be. And Google is trying to just, just circumvent that. It's, they're not saying, you know, you know you're not going to have it. It's just if you search for it on our engines, then you're going to find the truth quicker than you're going to find the lie. And, and it doesn't stop. And it, they're not forcing any other search engines to do it either. It's strictly to Google. They can still go to Bing and get whatever they want to get. Oh, wow. <laughs> I have more to say on that than I thought I did, apparently. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, our next story, uh, more Republican shenanigans, this time out of Arkansas. Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson, naturally a Republican, will back legislation from lobbyists connected to Walmart that would open the door for private contractors to take over the management of s local school districts, the Arkansas Times reported. The bill, HB 1733, was introduced by State Representative Bruce Cozart, also a Republican, and was written by, Wal by Walton Family Foundation lobbyists. Gozart is also chair of the State of House of chair of the State House Education Committee. The bill was sent to committee for review on Friday and needs 11 votes to advance to a vote on the floor. According to the Times, the bill would establish an achievement school district that could include any school district found to be under academic distress. The State Education Commissioner would then have the ability to directly operate or contact or contract with one or more not-for-profit entities to run the district for a three to five year period. Individual schools would also be eligible for transitioning to a privatized system with the rest of that school's former district potentially responsible for paying for busing and food costs. The Times have also reported that the bill would turn teachers in any achievement district into at-will workers, and we all know how that works out. Mm. Districts run under this model would not be required to have a school board or field licensed teachers. They would not have to have licensed teachers. You kind, you know, that there's a reason why you have a teaching license, is so you know what the fuck you're doing. That's an indication. Hey, I have this license that shows I know what the fuck I'm doing here. I mean, I mean, I agree with helping schools out that are under academic distress because mm -hmm. some yeah. schools just don't have a lot of money. Yeah. Unfortunately. Um, I went to a high school that um, just didn't have a lot of money, uh, despite it being one of the more famous schools in in the South, East, pretty much, mm -hmm. but uh, just didn't have a lot of money to do repairs on older buildings and get new desks, sometimes didn't have enough textbooks, and instead spent the money on, you know, uh, golf carts for our, uh, for our security officers and... Yeah. Instead of giving us new desks, and that kind of pissed me off a little bit when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I agree with helping schools out that don't have enough buses or don't have the best food in the world. But I mean, teachers are already fucked up, like fucked over enough as it is. Yeah, and turning like, them into teachers are not treated things. well in this country, really, and yeah. it sucks. But. I mean, there's, like, half of this I agree with. Like, yeah, helping out a school that doesn't have a lot of money or needs new stuff, mm -hmm. you know, that's great. But, you know, don't try to fuck over the teachers at the same time. Yeah, and, yeah you, you don't know. need to fuck over the teachers. If you here, Here's here's where I am at on this. If you want to give money to an ailing school district, fine. You know, pump your that's money great, in there. That's great, actually. That's all, great. All, 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 all well and good. That's, at the end of the day, that's fine. You know, yeah, it gives wonderful. them a little bit more money to do what they need to do. They can pay their teachers more. They can pay their teachers more. They can pay their teachers more. Yes, I did that on purpose because that is an important fucking thing because teachers are doing a, a, a very, very important job. And they, I, I think it's like teachers and soldiers are among the lowest paid professions mm -hmm. in this country, you know. You know, you know, outside of like, you know, like, like fast food work or whatever. And even then, uh, this is, yeah. we, we need a national raise, basically. Um, but that's a whole different conversation. But from what I'm gathering here, it's not just a matter of 
like the Waltons giving money to the school district, it's not a, it's the Waltons being able to take over the school district and run it as though you know because they're they're putting money in this, and that should not be. I mean, because... I feel like if it if it is a private school, they would have you know they could do that. That's legal to do. But if it's a public school, you can't just do that, you know. Yeah, and and I think that's. I think that's if they, where if this they is wanted to, to create go. their own private school system. Yeah, if they then, wanted, to, yeah, yeah, like that's legal to do. But totally, but from the sounds of it, it sounds like they're wanting to take public schools, at least at least in this particular area, and privatize them a bit. And we and we know what happens when a school is privatized. That means they don't fall under the jurisdiction of church and state, and thus, you know. And, and hey, if you're a public school that suddenly becomes a private school, and you're somebody that is, you know, not a Christian, for example, you're going to have a lot of Christian rhetoric. You could, rather, uh, I, I shouldn't say definitely, but you could have a yeah, lot of I mean, Christian maybe. rhetoric shoved I mean, down your not, throat. That's not all private schools. Yeah, hashtag not all uh, private schools. Definitely, definitely, a lot of private schools yeah. are religion religion based. Yeah, but not all of them. Yeah, and even then. If, if it's a private school, most people are going to think, okay, if it's a private school, you're going to have to pay to go in. you got to pay to go there. And I would not be surprised, given given that this is Walmart, that if they did privatize, regardless of, of what the academic um, um, things are going to be, they're going to charge people money to send their kids there. And not everybody is going to be able to afford it. So what I worry about is what is what their end game is. Whether it's, whether it's religious or not, we'll take the religious thing and just set it over there for a moment. What I would be worried about most is that they would take this and use it as a way to earn more money for themselves while fucking over the really poor people. And, and of course, if the poor people can't get to school, then they can't get educated. And then you have Republicans like Asa Hutchinson here who would probably say things like, well, yeah, these poor people are so uneducated. Look at them. They can't even get a fucking job. Well, why can't they get a fucking job? Well, they can't afford school. Well, why can't they afford school? They don't have a job. It, it, it's, it's one of those things that's like, yeah, why can't they af- – why can't they get a job? Because you won't hire them because they're not smart enough. Why can't they get why can't they get the education to become smart enough? Well, you're pretty much, you know, closing all the doors that, that they could have went through to get a better education. Because by privatizing, that opens that door for Walmart to say, Yeah, yeah, you want to come to our school, you have to pay. I don't I and I will say I honestly don't know if that's what actually would happen in the end, but it's it with this being Republicans and the way they tend to go in this country, and with the way and with Walmart's track record, I, I think it's a safe bet that, that if this was to pass, something like that would happen, based on based on the track records of all of the parties involved. That that's where I stand on this. Oh. so did you have any <laughs> extra thoughts on that one? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> This is why I don't do that it's structured stuff. Yeah, well, which is which is fine. You know, every, everybody gets out of their out of their comfort zone every now and then. Uh, but anyway, uh, I, I will. I do have I do have one last story I want to look at. This one kind of lighten things up a little bit, um, because uh, fucking bronies. I, I I got a I got a razz on the bronies a little bit. Bronies. Be- yes, the bronies got a, got a razz on the bronies and and do a horrible accent. Uh, yeah, let me actually look like up an image of this. Yeah, uh, probably not a good idea to have in my Google search history. But oh my goodness, <laughs> oh, that, I don't want that to be my Google search history anymore. Oh dear. Oh, so that's definitely a thing. Yes. So what is this thing that Greer has looked up? I will tell you. An inflatable life-size My Little Pony doll seems to be getting a rise out of the Brony subculture. Really, a rise. I did not write that, by the way. The doll is a bootleg toy called the Sexy Inflatable Girl Pony. It stands at 5 foot 9. Thanks, China. Yeah, thank you. It stands at 5 foot 9 and looks like the My Little Pony character Rainbow Dash with some very distinct differences. It's also life size means like it's standing on two legs. Like it's about the same height as me. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, yeah. And and in the distance, my ex-girlfriend is screaming, Rainbow Dash, no! And she doesn't know why. 
<laughs> this blow up doll is a very curvaceous interpretation of the character and appears to be wearing a low cut leotard over what would be the pony's private parts. Make no mistake, Hasbro, the company that owns the rights to My Little Pony, had nothing to do with the sexy inflatable girl pony. I hope not. It is a bootleg product made in China by Hongyi Toy. Hongyi? Hongyi? Uh, H O N G Y I. Hongyi, maybe? But uh, they're. Toy... Hongyi, I think. Hongyi? Okay. Hongyi. Yeah. Hongyi Toy Manufacturing. The company sells sex, the sexed up dolls for, get this, $599 a piece, but will sell them for as little as $99 each for bulk orders. For bulk, which means like like more than 10 or like... Who would want to buy... Okay, okay, I was about to ask who would want to buy these in bulk, but then I remember Dashcon. Uh, they might. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to get letters. I'm going to be like, how fucking dare you? Uh, bite me. Um... Hasbro has not yet commented on the sexy, infl- sexy inflatable girl pony product, but My Little Pony fanatics are on the Brony-centric website, uh, horse-news.net. And I put the dash in there because, hey, if you want to go there and see for yourself, you can. Actually, most people, I'm on horse horsenews.net, and most people in the comments, like, 99% of them are fucking disgusted with this. <laughs> <laughs> Which leads to me having to defend... Bronies again because not all of them are like sex perverts and yeah, well, obviously. I know a few and like they're completely disgusted by like the clopping stuff like they don't get it and yeah. I think it's weird but then like it's so weird that people classify it, it's another example of people classifying the the like the subculture as the minority yeah. you know well yeah Oh, uh, and and that's and that is a problem with a lot of groups. It doesn't oh yeah, matter. yeah. You know, so people when they hear brony, they think of people who like stuff like this. But out of like, out of every brony on the face of the planet, that's maybe like ten to five, five to ten percent of people who like My Little Pony. They just happen to be very vocal. I think. Yeah, the vocal but minority. But most most bronies, actually, all the bronies I know don't get that stuff. Like, they don't like it. They think it's gross, you know? Yeah. Oh, and, and of course, as, as I probably, as I know I've mentioned sometimes before, you know, like, like on, on these shows, it's it's one of those times to bring up that disclaimer again. If you are a brony and, you know, the stuff that I, and I do generalize a lot. I admit that. And if you're a part of a particular group I happen to be generalizing and it does not apply to you, then good, congratulations. Um, mm-hmm. If it does apply to you, then, well, you know, take the appropriate offense as needed. Um, that, and that's basically it. That's basically me saying, yeah, just, I know this doesn't just, apply. Just, just practice. Just, yeah. you know, <laughs> feel free to practice your weird thing. Yeah. But don't. As long as it doesn't hurt other people, I'd say. Feel free to practice your weird thing. Just don't other, hurt other people or yourself. Exactly. You know? Uh, oh, and I do I do have a note. The, the article had a video. And the video has the title, My Diddle Pony. Mm-hmm. Ah. Yep. Oh, lordy. Oh, so with that, we are going to get out of here for this week. Uh, thank you guys for listening. Apologies for being a little later than normal. Normally these go up about Monday or so. Um, but, you know, hey, that just means it's going to be a shorter time before the next show. Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> which I think next week, um, I think we're supposed to have, uh, I want to say we're supposed to have the unemployed historian on next week as a guest. Um, I'll, I'll have to recheck the schedule. Hopefully my co-hosts will be back um, at that point because I'm missing them. Oh, it, it would have been. Oh God, I'm just imagining this was supposed to be Cat's Week, uh, well, one of Cat's weeks, and if she had been on at the same time as you, holy shit, we would have like had half the show talking about anime. I was about to say <laughs> I'm so glad that Cat wasn't on because we just would have talked about anime the whole time and we would not have gotten to anything. Oh yeah. <laughs> you probably made a really smart choice. Yeah, and then I would have known how Holly felt when we had Andrew Dickman on. Uh nah, I I I, I do watch some anime. I'm just not. I'm just not as much into it as, as you and Kat are, and that's cool too, you know. Oh. But anyways, we're gonna get out of here for this week. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, if we wanted to find and talk to Greer on the social medias, where could we find her? Uh, 
my handle on everything is at Orangerific. I'm not on Twitter, on Steam, uh, like Tumblr. I'm not on Tumblr that much anymore, but I'm on there sometimes when I'm talking. I'm mainly just to talk about Markiplier. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that's me on pretty much everything. I don't friend many people on Facebook, but I don't know, so yeah. don't try me on there. Yeah, don't try me. Uh, but those, those me. girls with the podcast is just those girls with the podcast on YouTube. Yeah, and we're we're and, just on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, well, well, you're not just. On and we're YouTube. on Facebook too, so. Well, you're not just on those two places either. Well, <laughs> yeah, you. Why do? You, you can also find those girls with a podcast on rtgomer dot com. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I meant by on YouTube. Oh. Ah. You know. But yeah. Uh, yeah, that too. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. It's it's okay. it's okay. Sometimes people forget. I mean, you know, Cat forgot. You know, to to uh, she, when she started plugging this show on uh, on one of her other podcasts, what the fuck? She actually kept forgetting the site name too. <laughs> you know, of course, I teased her about it. Um, but yeah, it's, if you want to find me on the social media, um, possibly escaping people that, that I am in trouble with. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Tumblr at gomer 21 X, and you can find my stuff on rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com, and I also have my own Facebook fan page, Gomer the Ranting Thespian. Go there, give it a like. Uh, you'll get updates, on regular updates on things going on. Uh, right now it's pretty much just production updates for the most part. It's like, yeah, when something drops, it goes there as well. Um, and, of course, Nerdvice and... Um, and, and RT Gomer Productions both have their own Facebook pages, their own uh, Tumblrs. And speaking of Tumblr, this very show, uh, thespiantalk.tumblr.com, you can go pop something in the ask, and we might read it out on the show. It'll be awesome. Um, so it, it will be great. Ooh, excuse me. We'll end the show with a burp. <laughs> uh, so again, thank you guys for listening. We will catch you next time. And until then, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Greer signing off. Uh, bye. Thespian Talk is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Our show's theme is Kick Shock by Kevin McLeod. Find out more at Incompetech.com. If you like this show and want to help support future episodes, head over to Patreon.com slash Gomer21XX. For a contribution as little as a dollar per production, you can get early access to all future productions, as well as monthly Patreon-only vlogs and announcements. Our show's artwork was produced by the talented Becky Hopkins, who can be commissioned by going to Patreon.com slash Becky Hop. Check us out on iTunes or visit RTGomer.com for more great shows.